Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Paul once again. Welcome to USMLA videos. As always, we invite you to visit our website at uh, www.usmlavideos.net. That is www.usmlavideos.net, where we have posted hundreds of videos on ranging on all topics that are essential in order to appear for examination. Tonight, let me talk a few minutes about placental abruption. Placental abruption is defined as the decidual hemorrhage leading to premature separation of placenta prior to delivery of the fetus. So you see, placenta, it separates after the delivery of the fetus. That is natural. But if it uh, separates before the delivery, resulting in the decidual hemorrhage, then we call it uh, placental abruption. And it is a very, very important topic and uh, a physician should be able to recognize it and differentiate between uh, placental abruption and uh, placenta previa. Now, there are four hallmarks of placental abruption. Number one, bleeding. Is there vaginal bleeding? Number two, abdominal pain. This abruption causes sometimes very severe abdominal pain. Contrast that to placenta previa, which is a painless condition. Number three, it causes uterine contractions because it increases the hypertonicity. It increases the tonic contractions of the uterus and results in increased contractions. And finally, a non-reassuring fatal heart pattern. That is the fourth one. So these things, it, uh, uh, they, they, comp they compromise the fatal circulation and results in fatal asphyxia or even fatal death in a severe placental abruption. So those are the four clinical hallmarks of placental abruption. Now, what exactly is the immediate cause? The immediate cause of placental abruption is the rupture of defective maternal vessels in the decidua basalis where it interfaces with the anchoring villi in the placenta. Now let us talk a few minutes about the incidence. The incidence is like uh, every one, one pregnancy in every hundred pregnancies develop this condition. And the most common gestational age for development of placental abruption is between 24 and 26 weeks. So that is the basic time frame for this problem. Then we need to talk about pathogenesis. First of all, think about regular acute causes. Is there any trauma to the abdomen? Sometimes patients, they drive and um, involve in acceleration, deceleration, motor vehicle injuries. And this causes placental abruption very, very frequently. And then the other thing is uh, thrombin formation. When the hemorrhage happens, there will be release of large quantities of thrombin. And this thrombin, it coagulates and it forms the clots. That's why when you take an ultrasound, the classic sign for placental abruption on ultrasound is the retroplacental clot. So the retroplacental clot is a sin, but that's not a, the, 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 the sensitivity is very, very poor. So you see, the, when you see this clot, it has a high positive predictive value for a placental abruption. So thrombin forms these clots and thrombin also it increases the uterine tonicity and as the tonicity increases it causes uh, the bleeding and it, ca it also causes the uh, loosening of the placenta. And the other causes like uh, development of placenta on some uterine anomalies like leomyoma. What happens, the uterine does not attach itself properly to the uterine wall and it leaves off. Sometimes thrombin, it also uh, stimulates the endothelial 
growth factor and it releases the other stimulants that might cause hypertonicity. Now risk factors. Risk factors as I said earlier is uh, abdominal trauma and uh, sometimes you need to think about spousal abuse. A boyfriend or even a husband might abuse the pregnant lady. So you should always have suspicion for spousal abuse in these patients. And the next thing is uh, medical factors. Medical things like uh, hypertension. Hypertension has a five-fold increase in the uh, in five-fold increase for placental abruption. Things like chorioaminitis, things like uh, PPROAM, that is preterm premature rupture of membranes. So when PPROAM happens, it might cause placental abruption. And uh, as I said, sometimes polyhydramnias. When there is a polyhydramnias, there is a higher risk for the membrane rupture. And when membrane rupture happens, dehydration happens, and that puts a lot of pressure on the placenta and results in placental abruption. And now we should always think about behavioral factors. The number one thing you need to remember when you think about behavioral causes is cocaine. Cocaine causes lots and lots of cases of placental abruption. That's why it's very important to think about uh, cocaine and do a urine drug screen in these patients and cigarette smoking. Cigarette smoking increases the placental abruption by like 2.5 times. So finally, a few minutes about uh, diagnosis. The diagnosis is clinical and uh, then based on the symptoms I said, vaginal bleeding, abdominal pain, uterine contractions and the fatal uh, compromise. Those are the things. And on ultrasound you see retroplacental uh, clot and also you can take fibrinogen test because in these patients hypofibrinogenemia develops in a severe placental abruption because some of these patients may actually develop DIC that is a disseminated intravascular coagulation because of the release of high quantities of uh, thrombin that thrombin might put these patients at the risk for coagulation, consumption coagulopathy and DIC and results in the lowering levels of fibrinogen. That's why you can also check the fibrinogen level in these patients. So that's about the basic uh, uh, pathogenesis and the uh, risk factors and the clinical factors of placental abruption. Very, very important uh, topic and uh, I hope you master it. Basically, it's a painful condition. You need to think about this condition whenever the patient tells you about abdominal pain and vaginal bleeding. Those two are the cardinal symptoms. Whenever they, th they tell you those two things, it's time to think about it. Because if you miss it, it could be fatal. Because some of these uh, things, they affect even the life of the mother. Imagine severe placental abruption happens and uh, takes the patient into consumption coagulopathy and uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation. Finish. You lost the mother. Then even in mild cases, if it is a chronic placental abruption, there is a fatal hypoxia on a chronic basis and that results in fatal growth retar re retardation, mental retardation in the baby, growth anomalies, all those things. So placental abruption is a very, very important uh, problem. And uh, even thinking about uh, things like cocaine and uh, cigarette smoking are important. Patients need to be, preg be educated properly about use of smoking they should be educated against use of cocaine and smoking because they ultimately cause placental abruption. That's about placental abruption and uh, visit us at www.usmlevideos.net for more videos. That is www.usmlevideos.net. Thank you. Have a good day.